that led to people like Gary Neville, and I'll get to that in a moment, and Jimmy mm. Carragher, and I'll get to that in a moment, sort of packing their tanks on Bowley's lawn, if you like. Mm. But even on Monday and Tuesday, uh, our studio pal Graham Soonis had a bit of a pop at him. You've got a man comes in who knows nothing about football, but he's an extremely wealthy man. Yep. He will have been successful in many different areas in thinking that soccer is just another business, which it isn't. And for me, I think he wanted to get involved in a subtle way of picking a team. I think Bowley has come in and interfered too much in football matters, and I don't think Tuchel was, was enjoying that experience. I have spoken to someone who's, and it'd be wrong of me to give my source of information away, but Bowley thinks he, he knows about soccer now. He's been here two minutes, but he knows all about soccer. And he's been making football decisions, which, no, not for me. Graham's keeping his sources close to his chair. Jamie I, I, Carragher. I don't have that, by the way. Huh? Not, I don't agree with Graham. I don't agree with that. All right. Well, Jamie Carragher called Bowley incredibly arrogant. Gary Neville on Twitter, mm. he says, I keep saying it, but the quicker we get the regulator in, the better. US investment mm. into English football is a clear and present danger to the pyramid and the fabric of the game. They just don't get it. They think right. differently. They also don't stop till they get what they want. It's an interesting point of view for someone that's brought Peter Lim into his football club who doesn't necessarily occupy the best intentions at times. Ask Valencia um, what they think at times. Um, but he's right in some respects. And he's wrong in others. Jamie is right in some respects and wrong in others. It is an incredibly arrogant and ill-informed and ill-advised statement to suggest that you can learn lessons from other uh, countries and other people's way of running sports when you're very early in the door. It's slightly naive. It's a bit arrogant to say that. And I don't like using the word arrogant loosely because I've already described it the other day as a word that I don't particularly like. But he was like. in America speaking to an American audience. I know, but he, he's it was about, for their benefit. He knows as a grown-up, and if you've, got, if you've got the ability to be able to buy a football club for two and a half billion, you're a grown-up. Right. You're in a room because you're able to have the acumen to understand that what you say is going to be reported around the world. That's why you bought Chelsea, because you're not from Chelsea, you're an American, so you know that the influence of Chelsea. So to suggest that people can learn lessons from, from the NFL, there are lessons that can be deployed in the same way that I'm sure the NFL could learn lessons from the Premier League, because the Premier League's got a worldwide audience, which is far greater than the NFL's. Look at the, look at the Super Bowl at viewing figures, and then look at the viewing figures of the Champions League. Different zip code completely. Gary is right to suggest that the Americans have a different way of looking at things. What their way of looking at things is, we are about ensuring the businesses that we own are sustainable and that they make profit for everybody. Owners, players, managers, agents. Then you've got the other side of the argument, which is you've got Middle Eastern groups that come in, couldn't care less about profit, couldn't care less about the, the eco-structure of the football pyramid, and they'll do their own thing. But Gary seems to be focusing specifically and explicitly because he's got an agenda. His agenda is... Glazers are the devil incarnate. They represent all American owners. So by association, everybody who comes from America is going to be an ownership model that destroys the ecosystem. Gary's right about the independent regulator. The tragedy is if you've read the 164-page report, which I have had the misfortune to read, you will know that the one thing I agree with, which is the rebalancing of the distribution model, is of course what we want, but the rest of it is bloody awful, some of it. Mm. Awful. So and so unwieldy. US investment, is it a clear and present danger? Is John W. Henry's investment a clear and present no, well, gender? It, is Wes Eden's at Aston yes, Villa's investment? Yes. If you get 20 clubs in the Premier League that are owned by Americans, then you've got a quorum to turn around and say, don't fancy relegation anymore. Don't fancy this. Don't fancy that. Don't fancy the other. Because we know it's an insulting idea to suggest that you change... I, I'd be amazed. I'd love to know how they played two games in America and got $200 million out of it because if that is indeed what he's basing the idea of all-star yes. games, Get it then, over we need to, then we do need to listen to him because there's right. $200 million available for the pyramid. It's very simple, Todd. The reasons why the pyramid needs more money is because the Premier League has sailed off into the sunset given 9% of the TV revenues uh, to the other 72 teams and has caused a trickle-down effect which has destroyed every single club outside of the Premier League economically because of the drag and tag effect of players' wages. You want to change that, son? Don't spend £260 million on players. Don't go spending £250,000 a week on players. But you don't want to change that. So don't give us a lecture about the pyramids. So, let me get back to the original question. You can give me an answer on this we head to the break. From local businessmen, Simon, to the Saudi state, to American investors, and yeah. that's who we're talking about now, should anyone who's willing to pour money into football, as bully is, really be considered an enemy to the game? No, not an enemy, but they, should have the, they shouldn't be able to dictate the change that's not required. And the change that Gary is alluding to, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. But he's using an agenda, like he does in most things, to get on a soapbox and, and camouflage the real agenda, which is the Glazers getting out of football, and turn around to say it's the American model. It's very simple. 
you, you, you know, the, 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 the idea that Carragher and Jamie Neville are, are lightning rods for thought processes about how football should evolve, for me, is for the birds. But the bottom line is they're right to highlight issues because they've got big platforms. And we should be concerned. But capitalist investment into football clubs is part and parcel. You want this? People wanted these footballers on 500 grand a week. They want to pay 100 million pounds for footballers. This is the byproduct of it. You get big business guys in that come in and go, football's a business. And when Graham turns around and says, football's like, not like, it's not like any other business, Graham, shut up. Of course it is. You've got to learn every other business. And when you go into football, you've got to learn the parlance and the experiences and the, and the, and the dynamics of it like you do with any other business. You just tell Graham students to shut up. I did have told him on, on Tuesday as well because it's oh, nonsense. And the reason why I get so het up about it is I've been on the other side <laughs> of this argument. I've been on the other side. When I watched the football world game, oh, we're not having you. You're 32 years of age. You might make some sense, but you've got too much to say for yourself. You've got too much of this. To, I had a bit of that from David Dean, so it'll be interesting when I see him on Friday. <laughs> well, but, the bottom, the bottom, but the bottom line is, no, because... Did you have too much to say for yourself? I believe I believed in myself and I believed in trying to you affect change for the right reasons. Boardrooms. I didn't get kicked out. I didn't, get in, I didn't go in them because I didn't want to be in there. Right? And I, when, I, when I went to boardrooms like Tottenham's, I didn't wear a tie and Daniel Levy offered me a Tottenham tie, which I thought was insulting. Why would I want to go to Tottenham's boardroom and wear one of his ties? <laughs> but the bottom line is, is there's a little narrative around Todd Bowley being built by the journalists and by the football mafia that goes, we're not having him. He's too busy. He's got too much to say for himself. How dare he come in and talk about our league? And there's an element of it's right. For the rest of his life now, I can tell you now, I went into the dressing room once at Palace, once at Grimsby. On the, on the 4,000th day I was there, Herbert journalists were still saying I was an interviewing chairman going into dressing rooms. That's why I get fed up with it, because it's not right and it's not balanced and it's not fair. It's lazy journalism. No, no, anyway, no, I disagree. That's it, I finished uh, now. OK, <laughs> we're coming up to 11 o'clock. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.